Hello everyone, welcome back. This is Avorian episode 70. I'm an Igneous and today, as promised, we're building a battleship. We're starting a battleship that's in line with this whole idea of a fleet that I wanted to build. We finished a carrier that has room for a lot of little fighters that can really uh, do quite a, a number on enemy ships we discovered, just kind of testing things out probably would be fine on its own for most of the scenarios that I can envision until the fighter count starts to dwindle just through attrition you start losing fighters and then all of a sudden the carrier becomes less and less effective so it makes sense that we would have certain support ships that would go alongside the carrier even if it's overkill it's still kind of fun <laughs> there's a lot to be said for the entertainment value and a little bit of overkill so we're going with this concept of a battleship which is uh, sort of like a main fighting ship within the fleet generally uh, compared to some of the other classifications like corvette or destroyer etc the battleship would be the larger one of the group known specifically for uh, the the immense amount of firepower that it's able to bring to bear so we're keeping that in mind in terms of the size this one's actually ending up a little bit longer than the carrier at this point that's not to say that I won't scale it down towards the end of the build if I feel it's just too large. There's no rule saying that a battleship has to be a certain size relative to the size of a carrier, but in my own mind it makes sense that a battleship would be at least a little bit smaller because the carrier has to have all this extra room for housing the fighters and housing the crew to support the fighters, etc. So we'll see how it goes. There's there's room at the very least to modify the size towards the end of the build. We can rescale it and not have to worry too much about it if it if it feels like it's just too big relative to the carrier. So having established the general purpose of the ship and uh, an idea of the size that we're aiming for, there are certain uh, questions about the design considerations, the, the appearance uh, and the position of various different things. And one of the things that I wanted to keep uh, very much in mind with this specific build is that we designed the carrier with, with certain key uh, cosmetic elements to it, the shape and the contours and just the way everything came together. There, it's very recognizable in a fleet, so to speak, if you're looking at the carrier, which you can actually see in the background from time to time. But you can actually sort of pick out key details and it makes sense to me that if we're going to have a fleet that's ostensibly designed by the same organization be it a military organization or a private organization that there would be key um, design cues that would carry from one ship to the next and the challenge I think with that is deciding which cues to use and how to use them without just making it feel like we're building the same ship that's slightly different. I don't want it to feel like a modified version of the carrier. I want it to feel like it's its own ship, but with familiar elements. If you have the two ships side by side, you can see how they might be associated with one another. And that's sort of one of the keys that I decided I wanted to sort of focus on. And the beginning of that process for me was the front end of the ship, which is kind of blunt um it, it just looks like it's made for ramming very much in the same way that the carrier looks even though you, you would never expect a carrier to be used as a ram you, you just you never know circumstances demanding uh various different things at different times but for a battleship definitely we can use that aesthetic that big bulky heavy front end as the basis for a lot of the other um, decisions that we'll be making Additionally, I really like that long, gently uh, curving slope on the top side of the ship, sort of like the spine going across the top. I don't know yet if I want to have the cavity in the middle of the ship where there's basically something above and something below and then nothing in the middle. I like it on the carrier. I, I think it looks kind of interesting, uh, subjective preference being what it is and all. I don't necessarily think it's the kind of thing that we need to be carrying over into other designs 
as a, just a, a matter of just natural assumption. Yeah, of course, it's going to have the, the cavity because something we can omit it, I think, in certain designs and not necessarily be shortchanging ourselves. In the case of a battleship, maybe if we were to have one, it would be a little bit smaller. It wouldn't be this sort of gaping opening that we've got uh, with the carrier. It's, it's kind of surrounded on the sides as well. We've got some outriggers with thrusters on them or engines. And that brings me to the next consideration for this particular ship. With the carrier, we've got basically the majority of the engines on the back side of the ship. And I don't necessarily dislike them, uh, but it, it's also not the kind of thing that I'm so attached to. I didn't think it was such a great design uh, element that I wanted to duplicate it. Um, I could go either way, I, I guess is another way of saying it. It, it doesn't really uh, stand out to me as a must be a certain way kind of situation. But in this case, I decided it might be um, kind of interesting and borrowing from the design cues on the carrier, but then modifying them to something a little bit more uh, distinct would be having those outriggers like we have on the carrier that's got just a very small number of engines but have more of them instead of having just one outrigger that goes around each side have like three of them and staggered so that the back end of the engines you're not basically uh, getting the blowback from the engines hitting the hull somewhere so we're going to have uh, the outriggers wide enough at the front and then narrowing with the the two outriggers that follow so that you can see if you're looking at the back of the ship you can see the engines and all three outriggers nothing is being blocked nothing is being obstructed it looks like it could make sense and instead of having the, the engines in the back that's where we'll be putting all of the engines for the battleship now we have to be i think a little bit careful about that because i don't want to put myself in a position where i've left myself so little room for the engines that the ship can't perform and that's sort of a, a key detail as well that we need to be thinking about is what exactly we expect this ship to be able to do. And one of the things that I think is very, very important is that this thing should be able to um, accelerate faster than the carrier by a fairly significant margin. Uh, I'm not really too concerned about top speed, but certainly... Uh, it should be in a position where it can move ahead of the carrier, position itself if necessary uh, to do a bit of blocking if we happen to be fighting multiple enemies. Position the battleship so that it can soak a certain amount of damage and let the uh, carrier and its fighters do what they want to do while the battleship kind of does its thing alongside them. So each sort of ship and fighter has sort of its role within the group. And in order to do that, we require certain performance characteristics. So acceleration being a very key uh, kind of thing. Top speed, not necessarily a concern. I, I wouldn't want the top speed of the battleship to be lower than the carrier, but nor do I expect it to be a significant increase over what the carrier is capable of. As long as the acceleration is there, not too concerned about the top speed. Maneuvering also seems to be fairly important if you're talking about a ship that should be in a position to be able to maneuver to block enemy fire and keep it from hitting the carrier or you know those kinds of maneuvers we have to be able to do that <laughs> the ship has to be able to pitch and roll and yaw and do all of those things fairly well again it's big uh even if we decide to shrink it it's still going to be a fairly long ship we aren't looking for it to be able to, you know, spin on a dime. Uh, that It's not going to be a, a giant fighter with a lot of turrets. But relative to the carrier, which is uh, pretty sluggish in terms of how quickly it can adjust its heading, we want an improvement there as well. So we've got certain performance characteristics that are defined in relation to the carrier. And I think that's one of the things that's very interesting working on this is in the past... When I started working on a new ship, I've looked at the previous ships that I've made as sort of a, a learning experience and sort of the things that I learned relative to what I wanted from the new ship, aside from just using a higher tier of materials. But in this case, we're actually 
designing this ship to work alongside a ship that already has existing parameters that we can use as a reference point so that when we're looking at this ship's performance, we can say it needs to be faster, it needs to be more maneuverable, it needs to be lighter, uh, it needs to be a different size. There's all kinds of different things that we can use uh, to determine some of the characteristics of this ship based on what we did with the carrier, but at the same time, the aesthetics and the overall design we, we, we have a certain amount of liberty. There are certain things that we can do that don't necessarily restrict us to uh, a particular way of making the ship look. So uh, given that a lot of the decisions around what we want this ship to be able to do and how I want it to look that based on the image that I have in my mind, this should come together in uh, less overall time than the carrier. Uh, but it is at the time this video is being produced, it's summertime and video production slows down pretty dramatically in the summer with me lately. I don't know specifically why, I just know that that's sort of the case. So in terms of overall time from the first episode where we start to build until the final episode with the blueprint, it may not be necessarily a quicker process, even though I think that we're going to be... Um, moving fairly quickly through the build for the for every minute spent building we're going to get more bang for our buck i think than uh with the carrier and hopefully that'll continue until we've got the the fleet built out so keep an eye on your feed your subscription feed if you're subscribed and you want to be notified about the next video uh, i do apologize for the delay in between the videos it's just a, a thing uh not to worry i'm still committed to uh, certainly, when I start a new build, I'm committed to finishing it, uh, and given that I want to do the whole sort of fleet layout, there's uh, guaranteed one more ship after this one, up to three more ships, just to get the fleet done before we move up to building ships out of Avorian and kind of doing our endgame suite of designs. So there's still lots to do, there's still uh, lots to cover, lots to build, lots to talk about. Uh, and if you're not subscribed to my channel and you want to be notified about future videos in this and other series, the easiest way to do that is to subscribe to my channel or follow me on social media. Links for social media are always in the information section below the video. There's just a couple of minutes left here, kind of reworking this bottom end, getting it ready for the next steps in the build. And we'll get the next episode out to you uh, as soon as I possibly can. So thanks for watching, guys, and take care.